Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Inter in FM20. I'm Aiton the channel Slate Gaming, and since last episode, that weird game versus Atletico where we lost and won at the same time, we have played a few games, and all of these games have been against teams uh, on the lower half of the table, and they friendly. We started off with a very annoying draw at home versus Torino. We totally dominated this game, created like 20 chances. We definitely should have won it. But then finally, we uh, got some into the goal scoring and scored three at home versus Udinese. And then it was a friendly because, you know, it's a longer winter break or January break, uh, December break in, uh, in Italy. So we had a friendly here and we actually played versus Atletico again. And this time we managed to beat them. The same result as we managed to beat them at home in the first Champions League match against them. And then we beat Genoa, one goal against the Nantes. This was also an annoying game, because we created like 30 chances, but only managed to score once. But all of this brings us to this table, where we're currently in fifth place. Oh, we are far behind the top. Far, far behind. We have 34 points, by Napoli topping, together with Juve at 41. So there's, um, yeah, quite some distant distance. Uh, but today we have a huge game, because we are actually playing away versus Napoli, one of the toughest games of the season, but also a game that could give us a tiny chance here to catch up a little bit, because we need it, because you know, um, well, my club doesn't like me and I'm fearing for my job. The January transfer window have opened and um, with the transfer window, I terminated one of my loan deals. It was Alexis Sanchez, and we kind of don't play with wingers, so I've been using him as a striker, which is not um, a great position for him. And also, he was making 245,000 euros each week. So, just uh, terminating that loan, because I was over the wage budget, that freed up a lot of space. And I'm actually trying to get a few tr free transfers in, for the summer, nothing special right now. Probably it's going to be players that I added, like youth prospects or players that I might uh, use or loan out for a season just to flip for, for some money for some profit. Uh, but I'm also making a serious bid on a player, but I'm not ready to reveal that one yet because uh, that deal is not done. We will have to wait and see what happens. And also, a player returned from loan, and that was um, Gabriel Barbosa, Gabigol. And he had a really, really good season in, in Brazil. Look at that. 41 games, 24 goals. He, got, he won some big, uh, big award. And his uh, contract was, uh, he just had like one, one and a half year left. So I offered him a new contract to get his value up. And he's worth 51 million. I was considering to actually using him because he's really, really good. But since I'm trying to buy a striker, and he's more of a winger, even though we can, can clearly work as a striker, I uh, went to loan him out uh, just to keep his value up. Might sell in the summer, might use him depending on what formation we're going to use for next season. But we loaned him out to Bayern Munich. And yeah, as I said, he's worth a lot of money right now. I also tried to uh, get uh, Icardi back, terminate his loan. But unfortunately, there was a clausole said that this loan cannot be terminated. So we couldn't get him back. So we'll have to wait and see if we get a, a new striker in because i'm trying to sign one right now we have a few injuries and uh very annoying injuries it's like um people having a cold and stuff like that we also have a suspension so we have three players missing out so have some youth uh youth players in the team right now um but now i've been talking far far too long so it's time for one of the toughest games of the season away versus napoli a huge game for us. This is the Napoli team we're up against. A lot of quality in uh, Ancelotti's team here. And uh, I mean, there's a reason that they are topping the table. And uh, you know that for some tough games, I've been using a little bit more defense-minded formation and instructions. And it haven't worked out very well. So uh, since it haven't worked out very well, I'm actually going with my all-out attacking formation now. Because maybe, just maybe... Since the defending doesn't work for us, could it be that attacking is the worst? I mean, of course, the best type of defense. Uh, 
Uh, we'll have to wait and see, because this is a, such a difficult game for us. Nothing going on right now, but then we see the first highlight, and of course it starts off with Napoli. A long ball, and we have won it. We uh, turn this into counter-attack as Bronsovic. Go for Ambrosio, Ambrosio into Lukaku, and he hits the post. That could have been a sensational start. But at least it shows that uh, we can create stuff against them. We're picking up a lot of yellow cards here. Not sure what that is about. Time to get a little bit creative at least, guys. Might have to tell a few play people to, to ease off tackles. Might do that during half time. Um, that chance is actually the only thing that have happened in the first half. Kokus sticks away. Serious shots for Napoli, one for us. 1-1. One, one. So looking like this, this is not a disastrous result for us. Um, look at all the red there and all, a lot of green for us. But still, we want to tell them that we're not pleased. Because uh, we can never be pleased if we're not winning, can we? So we're going to stick with that. But very interesting first half. And uh, this tells me we might need to be playing more attacking against more opponents. Actually, we have so many yellow cards. I think we're going to go to, to the tactics and tell a few of them. To, to ease off tackles here, because uh, I mean, we already have one player suspended right now. I don't want more of those if we can uh, can avoid it. And uh, I don't want a red card in an extremely important game like this one. But I don't want to make any any major changes here either, because we are creating more chances than them. We are playing away, so that's really really good. Octics on, three shots for us, one for them, nothing happens, nothing at all. Maybe we should take a look at some substance. So who is having a bad, oh, 6.3, a yellow card. We're gonna bring in a Samoa, yeah. That's um, what we're going to do. Martinez is having a garbage day, but let's see also who's tired. Gagliardini, I think that could be a winner. It's been a tough schedule and uh, we've been having a few injuries in the midfield. So some of the players haven't been rotated as much as I would like to. But we could still get creative, lads. And instead of the Insignia with a corner for Napoli. It goes far, it's cleared, it comes back. A lot of Napoli plays into the box. This is all the way to the other side for Insignia, but it's just outside. I believe actually Insignia is topping, is a top goal scorer in the league. I might be mistaken, but I think he is. So uh, whenever he has the ball, it's really, really dangerous because he's no time to find a net. But here is James Rodriguez, Rodriguez, Rodriguez. Oh, you beauty! What a goal! It's actually his first goal ever for us, and he does it at the most important moment. And <laughs> what a beauty it is! Look at this one, and actually, James Rodriguez was a player I kind of was hoping to be able to sign as a free transfer during the end year window because his contract were expiring. But unfortunately, Real Madrid has signed a new contract with him. But what a moment to choose to score his first goal, and what a goal it was! Sensational. Lukaku tired. Oh, these ratings. What's up with the team? And we have a uh, damage-filled uh, bench here. Trying to come up with... I think we're going to go with Palatio. Ah, uh, we go, go... This is a tired Lukaku. I mean, they are both playing so badly. I think we're going to go with Lukaku for now. Now, do we want to change these around? No, um... Go with a false nine. Four sh shots to three, so we still have created more chances than them. But then, of course, they say that we see we see Napoli with the chance. It's clear by the defense, but it will come back from Insignia. All that. Oh, we wins it back. Is Martinez? Martinez is he going to go all by himself? Is he? Yes, he is, and that was a very weak finisher and an even worse crap year pass. Five minutes of extra time, ref, where did you find that? Where did you find that? But clock six off, and this is a brilliant result for us. I mean, we didn't get to see many highlights. Well, looking at statistics, we were playing away versus the team that's topping the table. 
and we created more chances, more on target. We had the possession. We uh, did more passes. We did basically everything better. And this is a very, very important three points, especially for me who wants to keep my job. But this is clearly one of the results of the season together when we, we, we beat Juve. Fantastic. And I'm going to tell them, I, I am, I can't complain. This is a good, really good win. Some of the players, yeah, most of them didn't get the best ratings. But looking at statistics, I take it any time of the week. So yeah, look, look look at this. Now we are three, four points behind. But Juve has one game less play. So they will most likely overtake Napoli. And the gap will be a little bit wider. But still a very good result for us. Really, really good. But that's also it for this episode. As always, thank you for watching. And this one clearly deserves a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.